You should rejoice. Don't rejoice in iniquity. Rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in God's word. You should be happy. You should be ecstatic. That Jesus Christ died for a wretch like me and a wretch like you. He died to give you another chance at repentance. So why don't you take that? Why don't you take heed that Jesus still loves you? Why don't you take heed that God still loves you? Why don't you repent? What sin are you holding on to that you don't want to turn from your sins? Jesus can heal you of that. It's not impossible. You got gender dysphoria. You don't know what gender you are. God will easily tell you. God will easily tell you what gender you are. He developed you so that it's very easy for you to tell. Very easy. You want to know what's a sin and what isn't a sin? Open your Bible. It's written on your heart, on your conscience. When you do good, you feel good. And when you do wrong, you feel wrong. You feel bad. You feel upset. You feel anger. That's sin. But the answer is it going and turning over to more sin. The answer is it resulting in more hate. The answer is it resulting in more lies. The answer is it resulting in more violence. No, the answer is to repent. The answer is to confess. To say, I was wrong. I was nasty. I was angry. I was hurt. I was lying. I was stealing. You see, once you confess that, it really puts into reflection how awful it really was. And then after you admit it, you can turn. You can say, Lord, I'm sorry. Say, Lord, I had it all wrong. Say, Lord, I don't want to live that lifestyle anymore. I want to turn to you, Jesus. I want to turn to you, God. And he will clean you up. The Lord will clean you up. He will turn your whole life around. No more crying. No more lying. No more cheating. You'll be sanctified. How are you doing, officers? Yes, you can. Sir. Hi, I, I've talked to you before. Yeah. So uh, the reason why we're here, mm -hmm. um, we got numerous calls on you, right? Because they say that you're yelling at kids and you're screaming things at them that are making them uncomfortable. So that's all. I'm just here to have a conversation with you. Not here to tell you what to say or what not to say, but just from a like a, a cordial human perspective. Like, what can we do to make sure that people here feel comfortable, but at the same time, I don't want your rights to be violated. So that's where we're at. Can we meet that middle of happy ground? Um, I don't. I can't speak for them. What would make them comfortable? No, I, I understand that, okay. and certainly, if you say something else different, I'm sure other people who were previously not offended would might say, hey, now I'm offended. You know what I mean? I get it. You can't please everybody, okay? I understand personally because yes, I'm in that same position. Yes, sir. But um, the thing is, and, and I'm all for your freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Yes, sir. Okay, because just as, you know, I'm here because other people called, I'm also here to make sure your rights aren't violated. My rights have not been violated. Right, and that's, that's what I want to make sure I accomplish right now in this conversation with you. But at the same time, you know, this is a, a park environment and because not one, not two, but several people have called, they're just feeling uncomfortable and unhappy about it. And they're saying that you're yelling at kids, like they're gonna go to hell or this or that. 
regardless that may be your prerogative and within your rights can we at least agree that maybe some people might feel uncomfortable about it or maybe they don't want their they don't want their kids to hear from a stranger that they're gonna go to hell I don't uh, I don't I'm have, just having a conversation with you I understand yes. I don't have any response to that you don't have any response, response to, that? to that okay so um, the last time you and I, I don't know if you remember. I do. We I remember. Talked, yeah. You were very cultural. And yeah, I we, we came that. to a, like an agreement. Eventually, you you just like you you had your say, and then yeah. I don't know, at some point you left. But yeah, I'm not asking you to leave. All I'm asking is, is there any sort of middle ground you and I can can achieve together? I don't. I don't understand. The middle ground is the law. I haven't broken the law. No, I know, and I never said that you did. Okay, then that's that's the middle ground. So all I'm saying is... As long as they're obeying the law and I'm obeying the law, to me, that's the middle ground. That's okay. what law is for, right? So if that's the conclusion that you want to come to, yes. which is totally respectful, yes. okay, but okay. all I'm telling you from a human perspective is yes. numerous people are calling and they're offended by what you're saying, they feel uncomfortable, and they don't want their kids to be yelled at. Uh, so, so well then, um, uh, can we at least come to that compromise maybe to the kids? I don't have any response that? to that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have I'm, any response. That's just that. a plea for me. It's, okay. it's not a direct order. It's okay. not any sort of that. It's just a kind ask. I've, I've heard your plea. All right, that's all. All right, all right. I appreciate that, Mr. Okay. Ken. I appreciate you, you too. too officer. What was your name again? My name is uh, Brian. Bri Brian. Brian or Brian? Brian. Brian? Okay. Yes. All right, just so I can let my discussion room. No. Speaking of okay. Office, okay. Thank you, sir. All right. You have a good day. I appreciate it. Thank you, officers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to upset anyone, but I do know that the word is upsetting. I get it. No one likes hearing that they're a sinner. That's what the Bible says. That, that, that if, they, if you hate me for telling you your sin, then I should know that you hated Jesus first. So if you're going to hate me, it's not me you hate. You don't know me. You have no idea who I am. It's God you hate. And that's what you need to ponder. Why do you hate God's word when it's only there for your benefit? It's only there for your benefit. It's only there to help you. Now what you do with God's word is up to you. You've heard it. I've told it to you. What you do with it is up to you. But the Lord wants you to know it because he loves you. The Lord wants you to know it because he knows where your lifestyle of sin is going to send you. Like it or not, your lifestyle of sin is going to send you to hell. That's where you're going. And you don't have time to be smug about it. You don't have time to laugh it off because you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know. It can happen in a few minutes. It can happen in the next hour. It can happen tomorrow. It can happen right now. It can. It can happen right now. So when's the time to repent? Oh, you don't want to answer that? I'll answer it for you, sir. Today, today is the time to repent. This gentleman was right. It can happen right now. So now is the time to repent. Now is the time to say, I'm sorry, Lord. Now is the time to say, forgive me, Lord. Now is the time to turn from your sins. Choose this day who you're going to serve. And you cannot serve two masters. There's going to be no sitting on the fence. There's going to be, oh, I'm spiritual, but I don't believe in Jesus. Oh, I'm a Christian, but I don't think homosexuals are going to go to hell. Oh, I'm a Christian, but I don't think trans people are going to hell. Oh, I'm a Christian, but I can still get high. Oh, I'm a Christian, but I can still get drunk. No, there's no sitting on the fence. 
You're either of the Lord or you're of the devil. There's no cherry picking out of the Bible. It's going to be none of that. You should be really grateful. You should really wonder why God sent a preacher out here at the exact same time you were here. You should wonder and talk to God and say, why did you send a preacher out here right when I was walking past him, having him say, repent for my sins? That's an astronomical event. What are the chances that you would be out here while a preacher is out here telling you to repent from your sins? Repent from your false gods. Repent from your, your fornication and your perversion. You know why that happened? Because God loves you. Because God knows your time. God knows what you need to hear. God knows you're not getting it from your parents. God knows you're not getting it from your teachers. God knows you're not getting it from your friends because they're too scared to tell you the truth. So God's loving enough to send a loud mouth preacher to tell you that your sins are going to catch up with you. Your sins are going to catch up with you. And the wages of sin is death. Death in this life and death in the next. Hell fire for eternity. That's what's waiting for you. That's what's just. That's what a holy God demands. You should fear him. You should fear that outcome. And in that fear should pull you away from the fire. You dropped your marker, sir. Here you go. That fear should pull you out of your sin. It should wake you up. Is anyone hearing me today? Does anyone fear God? Does anyone fear hell? You should. Because it's going to happen. You're going to die one day. It's going to happen. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to the people you care about. Do you care about them enough to tell them that they need to get right? Do you care about yourself enough to turn to Jesus so that he can help get you right? I hope you do. I hope I hope you don't waste this message. I hope you don't waste the efforts of the preacher, the humble preacher that wants you to repent. That wants you to turn before you burn. Don't waste it. Repent for your sins while you still can. Turn. Turn to Jesus Christ. He can still save you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care if you think you're worth being forgiven or not. God is not a man who should lie. God is not going to lie to you when he says he, he, he is not slack in his promise to you. If he says he will forgive you, he will forgive you. And if he says you must repent, you must 
repent.